friends of Knox Metropolitan United Church, good evening. Grace and peace be with you, wherever you are, whenever it is you're watching this. Come and find quiet center in the crowded life we lead. Find the room for hope to enter. Find the frame where we are freed. Clear the chaos and the clutter. Lift our eyes that we might see all the things that really matter. Be at peace and simply be. Silence. It's a friend who claims us, cools the heat, and slows the pace. God it is who speaks and names us, knows our being, touches base. Making space within our thinking, lifting shade to show the sun, raising courage when we're shrinking, finding scope. For faith begun. So in the spirit, let us travel, open to each other's pain, let our loves and fears unravel, celebrate the space we gain. There's a space for deepest dreaming, there's a time for heart to care, in the spirit's lively scheming, there is always room to spare. I wonder how you're doing at the end of this day. I've brewed myself a cup of tea, the warmth, the aroma, the flavor has become for me, as I know I've mentioned before in these past weeks, such a important pause, something I find myself doing a lot these days, a chance to check in with my senses to awaken myself away from my brain and my strained eyes from constantly looking at screens. An ironic thing for me to say while I'm looking at one and you're looking at me through one as well. And root me back in my body. I'm going to read another thing and then invite us to join in a practice of the daily examine, a prayer of self-awareness, a practice of thoughtfully looking back over the day. Here on our porch or sunroom, I wish we could be here together to share a cup of tea, to listen to the birds that are outside and watch as the street, busy just a few hours ago, becomes a little more quiet. This is a blessing from Jan Richardson. In our breath, another breathing. Let it be that on this day, we will accept, expect no more from ourselves than to keep on breathing. With that bewildered cadence of lungs that will not give up. Let it be, we will expect little but the beating of our heart, stubborn in its repeated rhythm, that will not cease to sound. Let it be we will still ourselves enough, enough to hear what may yet come, what may come to echo, as if in our breath another breathing, as if in our heartbeat another heart. Let it be we will not try to fathom what comes to meet us in the stillness, but simply open ourselves 
to the approach of a mystery that we hardly dream to dream. The prayer of examine, a version of which we'll do tonight, it, it's a, a thing we did a few weeks ago on Wednesday evening. It's based on a, a very simple but profound presence that God, that the Holy One, that the Divine, that in which we live, move, and have our being is with us can be found in the course of our day. And that bringing our attention to our lived experience, to our emotions, to our body, to the things that happen to us, that we would come to a greater awareness of how we are held close by God and how we are tied closely to one another. I'm going to lead us through a, a simple prayer of examine. As I said, it's one I led us through a few weeks ago on a Wednesday evening just like this. Although it's hard to imagine and, and to remember how on our very first Wednesday evening broadcast, it was so dark in the church that I had miscalculated the lights and by the end of the little broadcast, it was hard to see me. Tonight, the sun is still quite a way from setting. A lot has happened in that time, hasn't it? How things feel so, so different. How the world we live in, how our own lives feel so drastically changed. It's moments like these that a prayer like the Daily Examine become all the more poignant allowing us a chance to observe how indeed God is with us. I want to invite you to take a moment, settle in, find a comfortable space to be. However you are seated comfortably, I want to invite you to take a few moments to breathe deeply. Like a rock falls below the surface and slowly settles in to the bottom of a pond or pool. Let us settle into our own body, our own breath, our own feeling of presence this evening. Let's breathe a few more times together. Acknowledge how you feel this moment. Maybe pause and come to awareness of feeling as sensation in your body. Maybe in your back, in your chest, in your jaw and neck, in your abdomen. Become aware of how you feel in this moment.
perhaps that feeling is easily named. Calm, grateful, anxious, tired, stressed, maybe a bunch of those all tied together. Acknowledge it. Let it be. We don't need to be different than we are in this moment to enter into this time of prayerful reflection. Maybe this exercise will be energizing. Maybe not. Both are okay. The holy, the divine, God, however we understand God to be, is present in all these moments. As best we can in our imagination, let us open ourselves to insight. Let us bring intention of attention as we reflect upon our day. Take a moment to think about what it has meant to shelter, to be quarantined, to be staying within the place you find yourself right now. How does this space speak to you of this day? Is there something that you can be grateful for within this space? The aesthetics of the space itself, perhaps. Perhaps the people or person, if that is the case, that you share this space with. Perhaps simply the gift of having space to be. Or perhaps this space is, is hard to be in right now. Whatever is that answer for us, let us pay attention to that for a moment. Maybe today was a day in which choices you would have made otherwise were taken away because of the circumstances we find ourselves in. Things that on an otherwise balmy May Wednesday you would have chosen to do, but you weren't able to today. People you would have seen places you would have gone. Let us pause and reflect on that. Limitations can be choices as well. While we are limited in what we cannot do, we can pivot from those things and instead choose that which lies before us. I wonder if this day for you involved a choice to engage with something, someone, somewhere because of limitations of not being able to be elsewhere with others doing something else.
all around the world, people are experiencing something not unlike what we have today. Maybe there is an invitation in this day to learn to feel solidarity with those who cannot leave the place they are in. Restrictions in the freedom to move with safety is something people experienced before any of us heard the words COVID-19. Maybe today we might be aware of the experience of those who are bound to their own homes because of age, ability, illness, or something within. Perhaps today we might feel a little more solidarity with those who need to stay indoors for safety in a place of conflict, who cannot move freely. I wonder if you've experienced God, if you've experienced holiness, the divine, within someone else today. Maybe someone you were with. Maybe someone you spoke to, heard from, listened to. I wonder if there is a small gesture that was for you this day, grace. I wonder if there was a moment of companionship, whether physical in the same place or whether shared through a screen, through a window, through a phone, through a wave. I wonder if you learned something today. I wonder if there was an interaction today in which it was hard to imagine God as present. There was a frustration, a loneliness, a hurt, a pain, even a harm. I wonder if there is emotion that comes to you when thinking back over your day. I wonder if there is feeling in bodily sensation. I want to invite us to sit with that, not to analyze, not to moralize, not to tie it all together into a little package, but just to be aware. As we move from a time of reflection and practice into a time of prayer, a time to bless the space between us as community, as world that cannot be as close as we would like, I will read through the prayers that have been sent in this week and over the past weeks. If you'd like me to name something specifically, I want to invite you to type it into the comments.
after some of the things, I will offer the words, O oh God, hear our prayer. You are welcome to say that with me. For those feeling overwhelmed, for those trying to keep straight the news and updates, for people who are having a hard time to slow down, to breathe, to ground themselves, for those who long to reach out, oh God, hear our prayer. For people who work in healthcare, nurses, doctors, administrators, technicians, janitors, aides, caregivers, support workers. For people who offer essential services, working cashiers at grocery stores, stocking shelves, driving trucks, picking food managing supply lines, for people who are scared because they have to go to work, because if they didn't, they would be in an even more vulnerable place. Oh God, hear our prayer. For people who are sick, whether from this virus or something else, and people who long to visit those in hospital, for people who grieve, and who wish they could reach out for comfort. Oh God, hear our prayer. For all of those whose vulnerability, whose structural lack of what they need to survive has been exposed to the rest of us in the midst of this time. Oh God, hear our prayer. We have been asked to share prayers for Stan Holmes, for Wendy Hubbelt, for Margaret David. We've been asked to share prayers for Alice, struggling with mental health, for Bill, seeking to grapple with his grief, for cousin Aaron, victim of the shooting in Nova Scotia for farmers, for those affected by fires, for those who struggle because of poverty, that we continue as a society to allow, for the courage to say no more to things that are unconscionable. Oh God, we pray. For recent tragedies that we have heard of that catch our attention on the news. People in Nova Scotia, the community around the snowbirds, for so many other things. For the people of Living Spirit United Church in Calgary as they grieve the ravaging of their small congregation by this virus. For siblings and friends in faith within the affirming churches of Saskatoon, who were the victims of hate-filled graffiti just over a week ago. And for all those 
in their midst who wonder about their own safety, the safety of those they love, in a world where such hate-filled things not only can be said, but find eager, listening ears in agreement. For the affirming churches of Calgary, who petition right now Calgary City Council to protect vulnerable LGBTQ plus youth through the banning of conversion therapy. For all those who feel fear as they listen to opponents of the ban speak malicious words about them, about their lives and their loves, about their own bodies. Oh God, we pray. For all these and so many more, may we hold them close within ourselves, a community dispersed, to bless the space between us. As you are able, I'd like to invite you to end with me tonight by saying the words of a new creed of the United Church of Canada. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new. We trust in God. We are called to be the Church to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Friends, thank you for spending some time this night. May grace and peace be with you until we see each other again.